This is part of the collection of Reverend Ray Hawkins, who began collecting fossils when he had pastorates in Colorado. Uh, these are ammonite cephalopods. We have both the coiled varieties, beautiful sutures here, as well as the more straight varieties here. More of the varieties, some of them are, are cut open so you can see the individual chambers. Here you, you peel off the outer coating that you can see inside the, the detailed uh, suture patterns. Here you see some of the variety that can exist in these as well. Some of the more, more uh, pointed ones that look a little bit like a snail. More of the varieties, that I'm especially interested in these here because they show these interesting uh, patterns of, of uh, curves that are present in some of the, these varieties. These are all Cretaceous from the, from the pier. And then also up here we see there's some brachiopods that are probably Paleozoic. Uh, and then we've got a nice example of clam here. Cut open variety here. Nice examples of, of the suture patterns. More ammonite cephalopods here, <clears throat> as well as some some snails and some clams available. This here, notice the nice coil variety of ammonite here. These are this would be a snail here, <clears throat> and then the um, nice example here of a also one of these coiled variety, partly coiled variety of spinning of uh, ammonites. This cross section through uh, some snails. Nice variety of plesopods here. Here we see um, where some of the some of the cephalopods are also present with clams. There's a very large clam, for example, here in association with cephalopods. Some larger varieties of ammonites. And larger still, this one is interesting in the sense you can see here the how the or how the, the uh, was found originally. This is actually, uh, was, you pop this open, it's probably in a concretion, and you can see then the different parts, two parts of this, the compression as well as the shell itself. Large ramonite still, and still bigger, and even larger. This one is nice in the sense that you can see here, um, as you look inside, you can see the siphuncle, and um, also the, some of the internal structure here at the boundary of, of the various chambers. Some of the collection includes things like coquina. Uh, these are more probably Midwestern varieties of Paleozoic uh, forms here, horn corals and uh, uh, this sort of thing that you can find, the Bryza ones that you can find in the Midwest present here. And it was a very nice one here of a basically a reef of uh, brachiopods that's you find these in northern Illinois here um, in the Silurian rocks. This is a typical Silurian trilobite from area and these are from, typically probably from Utah the uh, Arathia trilobites here. These are fossil fish from the famous uh, Green River formations that are present there in this was from from Wyoming. Detail is very well preserved here. Move over to here and we see what appear, appear to be uh, as a rock that has in it uh, various probably teeth and bone material, perhaps a fish, shark, shark teeth and, uh, and also fish teeth are present here. Some of these are very, very small as you can see and some are larger. The more knobby ones are more the probably the, the fish type teeth. Here we have uh, a collection of uh, various things. There's uh, there are the teeth here are probably phytosaurs. Uh, these here are mammal teeth and um, those are pretty clearly mammal varieties there. Uh, this is probably an oreodont. The rib, nice rib here example. Uh, these are probably phytosaur teeth there. Uh, this, these appear to be uh, fish jaws with teeth in them. And then we come to the uh, very spectacular phytosaur collection. 
uh, phytosaurs. These the the phytosaurs here uh, are going to be from uh, the the chin leaf formation, Upper Triassic. The uh, mammals are going to be, of course, uh, Cenozoic that we just looked at. Uh, this is a jaw of a of a phytosaur. The uh, here we see the various teeth. This is a uh, the right humerus. So you can see this was a pretty good sized animal. These things got to be as much as 13 feet long or so. Nice example here of um, abdominal rib. And then the shoots here, these are good examples of shoots, which are basically the, 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 uh, the plates that were the phyto, on the phytosaur, sort of like you'd see in a crocodile. Phytosaurs are all extinct today, of course. The, um, here we see some more phytosaurs, another example of abdominal rib here and uh, various shoots that are present, and then a, a limb bone here. Uh, and a very nice large shoot here, and several other shoots there, as well as teeth of phytosaur. Another uh, shoot here, and this apparently is uh, all probably a phytosaur uh, invertebrate. Here's a, there's some of the rock with uh, some of the embedded material of shoots and, and teeth in it, and then a lot of individual small pieces of, of teeth and shoots that are present in this collection here. This is a uh, very nice example of a Mosasaur uh, vertebra. Uh, one can readily see the uh, structure here. Of course, they had the ribs and such attached to it from the side. Here we have a, a weathered um, mammoth tooth been broken and so forth. And then here are, is our horse teeth. And then we have a collection of petrified wood of various styles and types, palm wood, different kinds of petrified wood present there. And an excellent collection taken from the fluorescent uh, fossil beds of, of insect fossils, etc. Uh, this is before they became the park, so these are, were collected before that time. And then here are some uh, materials were collected afterwards outside the park.